Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. It's the middle of July. I'm going to give you a tour of the garden and that bird came on cue. And I'm going to talk about the addition of bird feeders, um, a bird bath, bird houses, and just all the flowers I have here. Because this year I've had a great reduction in the number of squash bugs, beetles, problematic insects, but for kind of the cabbage looper. And I'll explain to you why that I think is happening. So I have tucked all over my garden flowers. In, in fact, they're not really tucked. I mean, I made specific planting areas. I just added this. This is over the septic tank covers. Anywhere that you can put in flowers that attract pollinators and beneficial insects, I highly recommend it. So this is the outer part of my garden. We're going to walk by the flowers. I'll talk about them a little bit. Lavender is one of the best plants you can plant. It comes back year after year. Pick the right variety. You can look it up. Brings in lots of pollinating bees, good insects, and they move from plant to plant and they will cover and cross your garden. Coming over here, this is the butterfly garden and beneficial insect garden that I planted last year and it's really coming in full force. Butterfly bush, purple cone flower, yarrow, butterfly weed, all kinds of different plants. Now, in doing this, I'm bringing in great insects, butterflies, but I've also attracted a lot more of that white moth I used to call it, but it's a white butterfly. And at times, I can literally have dozens of white moths flying around here. So they are devastating my kale, my collards, my Brussels sprouts, even with my regular spraying, it'd be a lot worse if I didn't do it. So I will have to figure out how to balance that out, but otherwise I'm really happy with what's going on. And as we get into the garden, I'll show you how well the squash plants are doing. This is my once dig garden I did a video on. It's doing really well. I'm pretty much, it needs to be staked up a little bit, but you can see how healthy the plants are. This is not getting a lot of fertilizer. We turned over the ground. We dropped stuff into the bottom of the hole quite deeply. Um, and the plants look really, really good. You can see, the masses of tomatoes in there. There's some down there and I'm going to be getting all my tomatoes at once. When you see a bottom of a tomato that looks like that, that's usually your first tomatoes, your bigger tomatoes that we're dealing with cold and heat and just fluctuations in the temperatures early on and they kind of get that cat facing on there. That's nothing to worry about. Beat up sunflower, just let it go. It's taking care of itself. It'll be flowering soon. And you can see all the sunflowers in here. These all just seeded themselves as I've been talking about in other videos. What this has done is it's given a haven for birds and beneficial insects. And the birds eat seeds. Some of them are eating my fruit, but I'm still getting tons of fruit. But then they drop down and they just pick at beetles, worms, things that would cause problems in the garden. We'll go in there in a second. This is my no-dig garden that did uh, really well for the first time. I'm growing my tomato plants without stakes. People always say, do I need to stake my tomatoes? Do I need to prune my tomato plants? You don't. This is two plants, and you can see how they will take over a garden if you don't do that. They're staying nice and healthy. They still get the sprays like my other plants, but I'm letting them go. Dropped in a couple of pumpkins. Next year, I will use this space better. I think it'll grow even, um, it'll be more healthy and the plants will grow even better in here that it's established. But it lived up to its name. You know, I laid down the cardboard, I dropped down the compost, and plants are doing pretty good with minimal, minimal care. These are tomato plants that survived that really harsh freeze I had, I think back in May, because they were in this cold frame and I was able to just drop it over. Same with the peppers. You can see how big they are. My other plants are large and they're doing well, but they're not quite here. I'm pulling tomatoes out now. My tomato production is behind, but they're just loaded with massive amounts of tomatoes. I like coming out in the morning because you can see, you know, problems now. That is localized to that area. I can see other dots on here, but there's no yellow halo on there. So I feel like whatever that was, might have been managed with spray. So I'm gonna come in, really inspect, like look around and see what's going on. 
move out those leaves, maybe put another spray down. But my tomatoes are nice and green, and because I've been spraying regularly, I think I'm really managing down those fungal diseases. All right, let's walk into the garden. Now, let's just talk about what has changed before I start saying how great nature is, nature is, which it is. I am still spraying neem oil. I still put down the organic dusts, not as much. So what's really changed is the number of sunflowers in here and how big my flowers are throughout the gardens. They are really blooming. They are really bringing in the good insects. And I've added bird houses, bird bath, bird feeders, and really brought in the birds. So what does that mean? I am noticing a great reduction in squash bugs, uh, cucumber beetles, the striped and the spotted. I still do put down my organic dusts at times, but a lot less. So I think the benefit is all the sunflowers that are around here, all the flowers obviously I've been talking about, but look at, and let's just take a look. Uh, that fly just disappeared. So I don't know if that was one of the predator flies. I don't know if it got caught on here or not. But there are beneficial flies that cilantro, dill, the flowers will bring in. You can see there's a cucumber beetle. Let's kill that off. That will bring in these predatory insects and they actually will lay an egg like on a squash beetle. The larva digs into the squash beetle and it kills it off. Love seeing all the bees around. Now, we just saw a cucumber beetle crawling through here. Just because you put in all these flowers, you bring in birds, or you use organic dust, doesn't mean you wipe everything out. I mean, it'd be great if we took care of problems. The whole idea is to manage them down so that the plants still thrive. And look how beautiful this squash plant is, you know, moving into the third week of July. I'd be hard pressed to find any squash bugs in here. I do when I water. I like to water and just soak in the area. Any squash bugs that are hiding beneath the stem, crawl up on the stem, I kill them. But just look at how healthy this plant is. So a combination of using the flowers, bringing in birds, really decreases the problematic insects, bottom line. And it's natural. Yes, technically it's organic, but it's natural in the sense we're not putting down any kind of dusts or any kind of spray. We are just bringing in nature and letting the benefit of nature take care of the garden. Just look at all the sunflowers. Another benefit of the sunflowers is it's given some of my beans places to climb and it casts shade down so now that we're in the hot parts of our summer the plants are enjoying the shade that's coming from the sunflowers and enough sun gets through that the plants are damaged I have flowers in containers all through my garden that in the left frame is parsley that had beautiful white flowers. The white flowers of cilantro, dill, parsley, Queen Anne's lace will really bring in um, beneficial flies. Water brings in beneficial wasps. The flowers bring in everything I've been talking to you about. So the only problem I ha I'm really having is I'm having more loopers show up. And I think that's because that I have a butterfly garden. I'm bringing in more of the white butterflies and you know they're just doing their thing the beans are looking great i wanted to show you so i do massive plantings of cilantro throughout the garden so these were all flowering you know in mass maybe four weeks ago and that's when you want to be bringing in the predator flies um, that's when you want to be attracting them when you know your plants are taking off the insects are coming out of the ground everybody's looking for food you want to have a nice mix of um, blooming flowers to bring in the good the good insects so let's go over to here I'll show you what's happening with my kales my collard uh, and my collards and they're just being chewed down I stopped spraying the neem I got tired of spraying and washing but this was really occurred over the last two weeks you can see 
There's loopers in here, army worms. There's some beetles, I gotta figure out what they are. Have brought in more of the white moth, well, white butterfly, sorry. They lay more eggs, even with spraying, you know, they were eating my kale. So I'm gonna actually strip all these leaves down, not give the worms a place to eat, leave the stems in place. They will come back, the leaves will come back in full force in about five weeks or six weeks. I'll have all kinds of great leafy greens towards the end of August for the fall. And I really like the taste better then. The leaves are sweeter, they're better. And the life cycle of this moth will have, of this butterfly will have diminished. And I just won't have these problems. Next year, I am going to just frame these out in some sort of um, agricultural fabric because I want to reduce the number of sprayings that I do. Let's see where we can go now. I mean, the sunflowers are just everywhere. Let's just go over to the cucumber plant. So I have cucumber, these are market moors. Really healthy, nice and green. And they're growing up through the sunflower plant. I've been harvesting regularly. This is what you want your plants to look like. Green on the top as we drop down. You start to see some leaf problems, some issues. These get sprayed with peppermint oil to manage spider mites. But just with the balance of the flowers, the birds, the regular scheduled sprayings, I think of the peppermint oil, have really helped my cucumber, my squash plants take off. Tons of cucumbers. There's probably more in here. It's time to harvest. There we go. A couple more. But this is what I want my cucumbers to look like. Maybe you want them to look differently but they are just taking off everywhere. And these will go at least for another two weeks or three weeks. Um, to be honest, they are growing better than any of my crops in the past um, for length of time. And you can see there's still issues popping up on the leaves, but I'll remove those, keep the spraying going, and just keep the harvest going. And right now, I'm also replanting new cucumber plants zucchini plants, squash plants, um, for another wave that will take me into later September. Let's go over and look at this. Here's a good example. So here is a zucchini plant that is more vining type and it just continues to grow slowly in a direction. You can see where I've been harvesting off the squash and, or the uh, zucchini. There's one right there, a little one, two, three still producing new leaves coming up I do thin out the leaves from the back allow the birds allow predator insects to get in there when I come up through here these are squash bug eggs right there again it's still gonna happen there's a cluster right there we're just gonna remove that leaf and I just pinch the top off. Now, usually I would find them in clusters in many more places, you know, but I think the numbers have really, really been reduced. But feel free to pull the leaves off from the lower parts of your squash and zucchini plants, and then this way the uh, bad bugs and eggs are more exposed and other insects can get to them and you can see and find them better. You know, the whole goal is not to have one plant that lasts the entire season. That'd be great, but you want to get just great production. This is a scalloped squash plant, nice and green, nice and healthy. I'll have to be looking out for powdery mildew soon, but the regular sprayings of baking soda spray can help with that. There's a scallop squash, but just really, really healthy. Here are my other tomato plants. A lot of them were damaged, but they're doing well. That's a chocolate stripes. The other squash and zucchini. Some of the leaves are starting to get beat up. I'm mostly looking now for the powdery mildew. 
But when you've got all these new leaves growing, something's going right with nature. I mean, they just look so healthy. The bees are all over. Here's the corn. People keep asking me, how's that been doing? It's over six feet tall now, 64. Seeds are planted, 60 plants came up, and you can see the tassels are starting to form. They look good. Let's go over to the bird feeders, the bird bath, so I can talk about that. Um, and here's actually, there's one birdhouse, a bluebird family's moved into there. They will eat insects. They love eating worms. They take them and feed them to their uh, babies. You know, they do eat seeds too. And in a far back upper left, you can see a bat house and another bird house. I highly encourage you to do something similar to that. Bring in the birds, bring in the good insects. Um, put the bird houses out there. I have more stations of flowers right in the middle of the garden to keep the insects moving around and flying around and the sunflowers these are miniature sunflowers they also feed the birds before we go over to the bird feeders I'll just give you a shot of the uh, cherry tomatoes that are growing up the arch that's my goal to have I've been saying to be able to walk through one end come out the other end with a huge bowl of mixed cherry tomatoes I wanted to show you the other flower area I have. Got melons, figs, cantaloupe growing in this space, uh, muscadines. So here's another place where I have flowers. I also have a good bug hotel that I built to give places um, for the bugs to um, sit at night, um, maybe over winter, lay eggs, all that kind of stuff. But mixed in here, right in there that is uh, oh well, here's one right in front of my face this is dill so I put dill all over the place this is just growing randomly up through here that attracts in the beneficial flies like I was telling you so don't be afraid to like scatter some dill cilantro around throughout the garden just let it come up it reseeds it comes back you know and you can harvest and use it but it's gonna bring in those good insects here's a shot of the garden through all the trellises. So anyway, I kind of just been rambling. <laughs> this is what I do every morning. I get up early, have my coffee, walk around and inspect the garden. So you got a, a picture of what my mind is like. There's a bird calling as we go through. Peppers look good, some construction materials. So right along here, because uh, the structure over there is new. That's our new gazebo. We'll finish by sitting there and I'll show you what my view is. I've dropped in bird feeders. Suet, which I've just, uh, here's some of it left. It has to all be replaced today. Different kinds of seeds. The black sunflower are out. That's what birds tend to like. But I don't know, there's five or six different feeders here. As soon as the sun comes up, um, the bird bath will start the fountain is trying to get going when you get a bird fountain or you're using water you want to put some sort of floating fountain in there or you want to have the water circulating to make sounds that really attracts the birds bird baths that have moving water will attract more birds it also attract dragonflies on oh, just real quick when you are setting up a water uh, structure a water feature make sure you drop in rocks or you put in pots or something that the insects can land on and get a drink of water. You don't want just a big, you know, tub of water um, that they can't reach. They're not going to land on the water. They have to land on something on the surface. So this is the talk about using nature and flowers and birds to really control in problem insects in your garden. And I don't know, let's see if we can see this one real quick. You can see the finches. Is he gone? You have a good eye. You can see a finch right to the left of that post on the sunflower. Now they mostly eat seeds. There's another one hidden up there. You can play seek and find. Now they eat mostly seeds, but they will eat some insects. But they will help spread these seeds around. So let's go over to the gazebo. And this is the look that I like having in the evening when I'm cooking dinner out on a grill. As I'd like to be able to just sit down 
and kind of look at what I'm creating. And I really recommend using the benefits of nature. You can see more flower pots right over there. Yes, it's organic, but it's not spraying organic sprays and dust. It's actually just using plants, using the birds, bringing in the feeders, bringing in the bird baths, bringing in the bird houses. And this is what I like to do in the evening. Just take a look at everything that's growing and what's going on. And I kind of just, you know, wander the two acres and think about what I want to build next and, you know, what I might take out of the garden for dinner. Thanks so much for watching. Hope this gives you some confidence to use nature as a way to deal with problematic insects and just use less sprays and less dust, even if they're organic types. You can use the birds and the good insects. Thanks for watching.